Hello, my name is Samantha Fletcher and I'm a lecturer in criminology here at the Open University. I'm also deputy chair for DD804 Crime and Global Justice, which forms part of the F75 qualification MA Crime and Justice. This September will mark the seven year anniversary of the Occupy movement. On the 17th September 2011, hundreds and by some estimates even thousands of people flooded the streets of Manhattan in the city of New York, setting up a camp in Zuccotti Park just outside of the financial district of Wall Street. This group of people would come to be known as Occupy Wall Street. The reason for this extraordinary display of popular will that we witnessed on that day was multiple. Whilst it's widely acknowledged that the Occupy movement was, is, an evolving, open-ended and fluid movement that actively avoided generalisation, we are able to discern a multitude of reasons for its occurrence. Reasons that were often expressed through the vast array of posters, banners, images and messages on display in and around the camp. These reasons included, but were, but were by no means limited to, the reckless action of the banking and finance industry, austerity programmes which largely affected some of the already most marginalised persons in society, inadequate healthcare, lack of upward mobility and in turn falling social mobility, Increasing inequality, economic injustice, joblessness, the many harmful activities acted out by multinational corporations, growing debt, the decline of the social safety net, rising mass incarceration, a culture of war and violence, the continually growing influence of the wealthy, and also corruption within politics, resulting in a subsequent lack of any real democracy in the truest and fullest sense. A list of the broad range of grievances was summarised in the Declaration of the occupation of New York City in their first General Assembly meeting in 2011. But ultimately, the movement sought to contest the accumulation of wealth and privilege by a small handful of elite and powerful persons in society, which was then at the expense of everybody else. It was this sentiment that sparked its symbolic mantra of we are the 99% and it's 1% versus the 99% discourse. The Occupy camp in New York City wasn't the only one. Following the setup of the original camp, over the course of the following months, and in many cases just within weeks, the Occupy movement and its style of non-violent direct action would spread, occurring in another estimated 950 to 1,500 cities worldwide. The movement was also one of a series of protests and uprisings globally in that year, and thus the movement sought to make connections with various other groups, perhaps most noticeably with the Indignados in Spain and a series of events collectively given the name the Arab Spring all of which gave rise to 2011 being referred to as the year of direct action. So what now, seven whole years later, what might we consider the legacy of this inspiring and globally reaching movement? Well, firstly, the Occupy movement and the activities of its members had some quite tangible, albeit sometimes fairly modest victories. A key example being the momentum it helped foster in a successful campaign to increase minimum wage in the US. But more than that, I think we can argue that the Occupy movement fundamentally opened a vitally important space for a much needed conversation at a time when it was perhaps most needed. And despite its diverse political makeup and differences in suggestions for how to change things for the better, the movement was collectively unafraid in naming capitalism and all its ills as at the heart of the problem. One of Occupy's many mantras was that it wasn't a protest but a process. And as such, I would argue that the Occupy movement, its spirit and desire for equality and social justice, lives on, dispersed into other forms of resistance, from larger mass mobilisations to small everyday interactions. And although all the camps have long since been physically removed or destroyed, often very violently by state agents, as another of the movement's sayings went, you can't evict an idea.